Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we're going to learn how to add user registration and save new users in our Django project. And I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. The source code for today's tutorial starts where the previous lesson ended, and there's a link in the description that provides the code for each lesson. I've got VS Code open. Let's open a terminal window. And as always, we need to start our virtual environment. So I'm going to type source, then .venv slash scripts slash activate and press enter. After that virtual environment's installed, we need to cd into the my project directory and we're ready to begin. Let's close the terminal window and open the my project folder in the file tree. And after that, we need to open up our users app and let's scroll down to the views.py file. Now in this file, we've got an import we need to add at the top so we can add in our user registration form. And as I've said before, I don't memorize all of these, so it doesn't hurt to look at the docs or take notes as well. So we're going to say from Django, dot contrib dot auth dot forms and what we're doing is importing a form django already provides a lot of the authentication that we need to add and that's a nice addition to django that's something that would take us a long time to create otherwise so from this we are going to import the user creation form now, after we have that imported, we need to create the form in our register view function. So we'll say form equals user creation form, and we'll call that with the parentheses after. Now, finally, in the return here, where we call the render function, we need to pass in that third parameter that we have seen before. This is an object. So here we're going to have form and then a colon, and we're going to pass in the form that is created. Now I'm gonna press Alt-Z so that wraps down so you can see everything here on the screen. And from here, we just wanna save our changes for now. We're going to come back and make more changes, but this is going to create the form and pass it to our register template. Now we haven't created uh, anything else except an H1 from the last lesson on the register.html template, but we're going to add more to it now. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. You may be surprised to learn that three out of every four viewers, nearly 75% of all people who watch my channel aren't subscribed. So I just wanted to take a quick second and remind you to hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And if you really like my videos, you can get exclusive content and support my channel even more by joining my Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Gray. Thanks for your consideration. And now back to the video. So let's go back to the file tree and open up the templates directory and then look at our register.html template. So now we're passing that form we just created in the view function to this template. And we need to add a few other things to this template so we can use that form. And so we still need to add a form tag in our HTML. And this action is going to submit to the same form page and it's going to be at users slash register slash. Let's add a couple of more uh, attributes here to our form tag as well. So we also wanna say what method, and we are submitting this form with the post method. And then I'm going to need to press Alt Z to wrap everything down again, because this will get uh, to be a longer line, but I'm going to put in a class just for some CSS that I'm providing today for this form. So Django is unopinionated about the CSS. You can supply your own to the form. And I've done that in advance. Again, this is not a CSS tutorial, so you can grab that CSS out of the file for this lesson. And remember, that's in the static directory where that CSS is created that we've been using on all of our templates. So here I created a class that is form-with-validation. And so that will be referenced in the CSS. And I'm going to press Alt-Z so that wraps down. And then inside the form, we're going to need to add a couple of things as well. So here is where we're going to provide that form that we created in the function. So two curly brackets and then form. Now, after that, we also need a submit button. And if there's only one button in a form, it defaults to type submit. So we don't have to declare the type. I'm just going to put a button, and then I'm going to say 
submit on the button. And by default, this will be the button that submits the form. Now we're not quite finished with our form yet either, and that's because Django also provides some security through a CSRF token, and that stands for Cross-Site Request Forgery. So it's ensuring that this form is being submitted from our site and not from something pretending to be our site. And to do that, we have to include that CSRF token. And we can do that. I'm just going to start typing CSRF and you can see it comes up in my menu. So I'll press tab and it adds it, but it's using our same templating language here that has the curly brackets and percents. So you see that CSRF token. If we did not include this in our form, Django would throw an error. So let's save these changes. And now let's open up a terminal window once again. And let's go ahead and start our project just to make sure the form is working as expected so far. It's not going to save a user. We just want to make sure we're not getting any errors. So we'll type pi manage.py and then run server. Press enter. It should start at our local host that is 127.0.0.1 and then port 8000. So I'm going to hold down the control button and click that. And once it starts, I can pull it up in Chrome. Here is our site and everything's running as expected so far. Now let's make sure we have that same registration page that we had from the previous tutorial. So that should be at user slash register. And here it is. And I have a button that's not formatted. I didn't expect that, but everything else kind of looks like I expect it to. It looks like I need to add just a little more CSS as well. And I'll add that before we move on to the next part. But right now we see some of this. We get the username, we see what's required here, and then we have the input for the username, we have the password, we have the password confirmation. And of course, I don't want my button to extend all the way across the screen, so I will fix that. Let me go ahead and put in a new user here. And again, it's not going to save the user, but I'll just say Fred, and here I'll say chips, one, two, three, four, chips, one, two, three, four and press enter. And yes, no errors, and we stayed on this form page because it submits to the same page. So everything's working as expected so far, except this little bit of extra CSS I'm going to add to fix this. And I'm back in VS Code. I just need to apply the class to the button that I forgot to apply to fix that button with the CSS. So the class equals form dash submit. And now next time we see that button, it should be a more normal size. But now we need to add the code that will actually save the user after we submit the form. And it requires some conditional logic. So let's go back to our views.py inside of the users app. And this is where we can apply that conditional logic. Now we need one more import at the top. So besides render here coming from Django shortcuts, let's put a comma we also need the redirect function because if we successfully save a user, then we're going to redirect back to the post list. So now inside of our register view function, we'll start our conditional logic with an if statement. We can say if request.method equals post, and this needs to be all caps specifically here. So inside of this, if the request method is post, and that means the form has been submitted. Remember, we're submitting that with a post request, the post method back to this same address. So this function will handle this request. And if it is a post method, then we're going to say form equals user creation form like we did before. But now we're going to pass in the request dot post information that we receive. And notice that also needs to be a capital dot post there. So now the form has been submitted with information and it will validate the form. And if the form is valid, we want to save the user. So let's handle that with a nested if statement here. So inside of our if statement, we have another if statement. We'll say if form dot is underscore valid, which is a function that will return true or false. So if it is true, then we're going to say form dot save, and that saves the new user. So if the form checks out, it saves. And then after that, we need to redirect. So we want to return our redirect. And now we're re going to redirect to the posts app, and we're going to use the named URL list. So we see the post list. This is a lot like we used the slug previously. So we're using the name of the app and then the named URL reference inside of that app. So we go to the post list. 
And this is what happens if the form is submitted and it is valid. So if the form is submitted and it is a post method and that's what should happen, then we're inside of this if statement. So there's two possibilities here. Either the form is valid or it is not. Either way, the form validation is going to check here. So it's creating this user form with form validation. For example, say I tried to create another user with the name Dave. It would tell me a user already exists with that. So that's an example where it would have validation, but the form would not be valid. And so if that happens, we need to come down here below and there's other two other possibilities. One was the possibility we already had, which was the else if it's not submitted through a post, typically a get request, like when we would first visit the form, then we would just create the empty form. So that should be the else if it's not the post method. And then the other possibility is we don't have a valid form. So then it's just going to skip this else because it already was inside of this first if here. And then it will just go to this return and it will return the form with that validation saying, hey, there's already a user with this name. Likewise, if it was just requested as an empty form here, it's also going to return the form and we'll just see that empty form. So the three different possibilities, I hope you follow along with that logical uh, flow of information here, conditional logic. So now with these changes in place, let's save this once again and pull our form back up. We should, let's check our terminal to make sure this server is still running. Mine is, and I hope yours is. If not, go ahead and start your server again. Now let's go back and look at our form once again. I'm going to hold down the shift key and refresh, and there our submit button is correct. Now let's go ahead and submit a user just to create a new user. So let's call this user Tony, and I'll make his password chips1234. Chips one two three four. It should pass all of that uh, requirements that we see there. I'll press enter, submit, submitted, created the new user, and took us straight to the post list. So that redirect also worked. So now I once again want to go back to the users slash register. Now let me try to create a user with my name because I know I'm already saved in there. So I've got Dave. And here I'll just put in a password that I know won't pass the validation for the password either, like test. Now let me submit, and we can see this validation comes back. So here was another possibility. We submitted the form, but the form was not valid. And through the CSS I added, you can see that clearly the error is here. So a user with that name already exists. Then also, what was not correct about the password. So we have to have those things. And of course, we've seen the third possibility already, and that's when we first load the form before we filled it out. That get request just gives us the empty form. So we've seen all three of the possibilities through that conditional logic. Now let's also go to the admin. If you remember your admin login from previous lessons, and here we wanna just verify that our new user, Tony, is in our database. So I'm going to enter in my username and password here, which was Dave test this example. So now I'm here in the uh, admin window and I go to users and here's Tony. He's not an admin himself. I'm just looking at the users. I'm an admin. So you can see that staff status with the green check mark here versus the red check over here. But Tony has been added as a user to our Django application. Now, the only other thing I'd like to do before we finish our user registration today is go ahead and add a link to that in our nav bar. So let's go back to VS Code. I'm back in VS Code right now. Let's go ahead and collapse the users app because that's not where our nav bar is. Our nav bar is in the templates for my project and then inside of the layout.html that we are including then in all of the other templates. So we have that nav bar at the top. And as we scroll down here, we see the nav. And I've got several things here on the page. It's interesting that I've got an extra space here. We don't really need that. So I'm going to remove that line there and format this over like I want it to be. But after that, I'm just going to highlight the last one here, which was the link to the post list, then do shift alt and the down arrow and it copies it down. Now I'll put an extra space here and that little pipe symbol. So we have another pipe between. And let's change the emoji here. So instead of a newspaper, let's put in maybe a rocket because we are launching a new account. That makes sense to me. 
Okay, the URL here, once again, we're using the name of the app and then the named URL reference. So here, this is users. And if I remember correctly, here this is registration, I believe. It might be register. So let's double check that. And we can go back into our users app, look at the urls.py, it's users. Oh, it's not registration, it's just register. So let's make sure we put that in there correctly. Users and register should be the link that would work for our URL. The only other thing I wanna add that I'm not seeing here as I change the ARIA label for this to user registration is I wanna add a title for each of these. So as we mouse over, you can actually see a tooltip. I'll add one here, let you add the rest, but in the source code with the course resources, they will all be added. So all you wanna do is add a title attribute and put in the same thing you essentially have for the ARIA label, but that way, when we put our mouse over the icon, it will actually pop up the little tool tip so users can also see the text of what the icon is if they're unsure. Okay, let's go back now and look at our application in Chrome and make sure we have an updated nav bar and the link is working. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key and click refresh. There is our rocket. Let me mouse over the home where I added the tool tip. There you can see it pops up a little tool tip that says home. So I'm going to add those others after the tutorial. Remember that will be in the course links. You can do the same with that title attribute. Now let's click the rocket and make sure our link works. And yes, so that takes us directly to our user registration page. Hey guys, I recently started a Patreon and I'm already giving shout outs to Holy Coder, who is a progress provider and Eldad who joined at the senior member level. Also shout outs to all of the junior members that have joined. Thank you all so much. You're helping me reach my goals. And if you haven't joined, please check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Gray. I've got exclusive content there that you won't find on YouTube. And I've also got early release content. Hope to see you there. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day. Let's write more code together very soon.